not God. So most of us, in order to overcome our self-inflicted deficiencies, we try to dress up, buy a big house, get a good car, go on a trip, for people to think that we are doing well. So in the wilderness after the baptism, Jesus is confronted by his ego that in the scripture is translated as the devil. And the devil, knowing what's inside of him, brings out what he would like to achieve. Jesus having fasted for some while, he heard the voice say, when you're hungry, take some stones, you have the power, you spiritual. You could overcome anything and do anything you want. You are magic. Take these stones and make bread. <laughs> you see, sometimes when we have an enlightening moment, we get self-righteous, self-appointed, and we feel we could do anything. And then you have a check voice and say, man shall not live by the material alone, but from the ideas that come from God. Man shall not live his life to manifest the material and depend on the material to live his life. That living should be a spiritual experience where we take the ideas that come from God, transform them in our minds to the things that we think we can do and share with others so that we can live a healthy, happy, and prosperous life. But that's just one part of the ego. Sometimes, you know, when you are born into a state of low degree, and you look at all these people around you, who you think have power. As a little boy, you sit down and you look at them and you say, one day, hmm, I'm going to control all of them and when I get that, I'm putting all of them in jail. I'm going to beat them up and I'm going to do all kinds of stuff because I know my power over them. The lusting for power and the control of other people is one of the things that Jesus had to work with to realize the divine potential he had discovered on the banks of the river too. We all have to do that. We all have to release these negative impulses that come to us when we have a moment of inspiration, when something inside of us says, you yeah, now you are just as good as anybody. You don't need to prove it. And then his ego had some other stuff. Now it says to him, if you are really the Messiah, the chosen one of God, well then you can defy all the laws. So on the top of the pinnacle of the temple, he says, I could fly. Pass yourself down. You know, sometimes when we allow ourselves to get waylaid by our own spiritualization, we want to do some miraculous thing, miraculous thing. You ever, you ever, you ever try that? Huh? Hello now. Yes. Am I speaking to the converted or I have to convert you this morning? <laughs> Who am I speaking to? This is the stuff that you read in the Bible from Simpson and Pierre. This is not a story about Jesus of Nazareth. This is your story. You realize that the Bible is your story retold and retold by different people so that you can appreciate your life and come to the truth of your being. So the devil says then, well, cast yourself down and see if you could fly. We like to think we could 
do what? Disobey natural law and survive. Whatsoever a man sows, he reaps. So sometimes people get in trouble by what? Disobeying the law and then start to do what? Blame other people. Well, if the devil made me do it, flip person. <laughs> Number four. People watch you in your eyes and they cross the street in front of your car. And they're telling you, you are in command of my life. If I die, it's your fault. We do that. We break the law and expect not to suffer the consequence of the law. Jesus realized that. It says that when he had gone through all these expectations he is, he's had as a human being, he finally told the devil, get me behind me, and it says, the devil left. It says the angels came and ministered our him. One of the first things we need to do if we want to make a change in the way we live is to go through the record of our own thinking and eliminate those thoughts that are not natural to us and come to realize that if we allow that self-form self we call the ego which is based on the outside needing to prove if we allow it to continue to run our lives we will end up the same way back in Nazareth instead of finding Jerusalem the place of peace how are we doing so far? It says that after Jesus left the wilderness, he walked along the Sea of Galilee. Wherever there is water in the Bible, it means potential. Because water is full of fish. Fish represent ideas. So wherever you see water, we know that's divine potential. So Jesus began now, it says that at the end of the wilderness, that the angel administer to him and minister to him. The angels are not human beings but spiritual ideas that flow to us constantly bringing us good news of a preferred future if we try to and turn and listen to the angels. So the angels are actually natural occurrences that happen in our minds to remind us that life can be better and if we could just take one idea and live it out, life will be better. All it takes is one idea. One idea is like a seed planted in the ground that becomes the beginning of a forest. It produces other seeds, producing other seeds. One idea is eternal. It is transcendental. It can be used wherever you are and results will come. Some of us are waiting for something big to come. It's just a little thing, a mustard seed. An idea cannot even be seen, so it's not as big as a mustard seed. It's just a flash of intuition that enters your mind and causes joy. Because you know when you have received an idea, something happened. Your spirit is quickened. So as he was quickened, walking along the Sea of Galilee, he began to call forth his disciples. Hello, he saw two men fishing. Peter and his brother Andrew, and he called them. He said, follow me. The disciples represent spiritual aspects of our being that need to be awakened to help us walk along the road. Peter represents faith and he represents strength. These two must go together. Faith is the perceiving power of the mind that links us with ideas. If we have ideas and we have faith, we can use imagination to expand the idea into so many different forms and see it in so many different ways. Without faith, we are dead. Faith 
is the power to visualize beyond your present experience. Faith, it says of faith that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's there, but I can't see it with my physical eyes. I can only see it in my mind. And if I see it, hello, I can have it. If I see it, I can have it. If you don't see it, you could never have it. Isn't that wonderful? So some of us like to dream, but we don't have faith when we dream. We get these marvelous pictures in our minds of what could happen. And then we go back to Nazareth and says, poor me, I can't do that. When you leave Nazareth, you're going to stay out of Nazareth. Hello now. Life is not going backwards. It is not about tarrying either. It is moving constantly to that place that only you alone could see in your mind. If you cannot see it in your mind, you are stuck. And you can't move until a picture comes to wake you up spiritually and creatively to help you design a new world based on a new hope. If you don't have that, your life is stuck. So it says that after he had called his disciples, he went up on the side of a mountain and he called. He says, I need something of you. I need to discipline you, to teach you how to live. See, a lot of us want to live the good life, but we are not disciplined enough to experience the good life. We get flashes of it. But if you want to sustain it, you have to discipline yourself. Without discipline and order, nothing will happen. If the student does not engage in studying perpetually, it will never come up to anything. Sean has been practicing the piano since he was five. I'm, I'm, I'm make, trying to make you look good, Sean. <laughs> five, five in the sight of God could be any age. <laughs> but Sean went right through music until he got a PhD. Then stop. He went right through, and that meant every day being committed. If there is no commitment, there is nothing. He brought them together, it says, as he brought them together, seeing the multitude, he began teaching them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Now we hear poor in spirit, and we see a lot of Christians who like to walk bending down low in spirit. Slippers on their feet, shoulders crouched. How are you doing? By the grace of God. <laughs> that is not poor in spirit. Poor in spirit means that you are not officious, full of pride, self righteous. Self important, do you know who I am? Simple, meek is an attitude that we need to take in and practice. God does not bless the proud, but He uses the simple human being to testify of its presence. Doesn't use the king. It use a virgin, a woman without child, please. Yes. 
to spread the good news. Use the leper. Use the blind. Use the halt. Doesn't use the well dressed to get a message out. Because the message comes from inside. So one of the first attitudes that we need to have is the attitude of simplicity. Nobody needs to know who you are. God knows who you are. And the truth will reveal itself in due time. Your titles don't count here. You want to say Hello now. Your titles don't go matter. You don't need it before your name. I know who you are. Because I knew you before I knew Abraham. If I know everything about Abraham, who did not have a PhD, and I blessed him, who gave his wife to the Pharaoh, and I still blessed him. And I blessed David, who saw a man's wife and went after her, and sent her husband to the front of battle. But I still love him because he humbled himself before me. <laughs> so it doesn't matter where you're coming from. If you have the right attitude, you will get back. Not to push yourself up. Blessed are those who mourn. To mourn means actually to do some forgiveness. Father, forgive them who may have Seek to hand. Release them. You know, every time you carry somebody on your mind, you also carry them on your shoulder. Do you realize that an unforgiven heart, the body is very weary and you can see all the lines in the face? Don't start looking. Don't bring no man on the I will tell you about the condition. You go home and check it out. You need to forgive. Nobody has ever done you anything you think they have done you based on your state of mind. It says, blessed are the meek. The meek, you know, there are some people who like to run around. They know everything. They want to do everything because they know everything. When you declare that you know, you cannot be taught anymore. Blessed are those who are teachable because wherever you are is a new place that you are at and things that are happening here are not the same things that happened yesterday. So you've got to learn to keep your mind open and receptive and teach yourself not to hold on to the past so that the past in the fields, you know. Meekness means the willingness to surrender to whatever is in your space at the time. It says, blessed are those or rewarded are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Those who are seeking, constantly looking beyond telling themselves, I know nothing, and keep looking for more and more and more and expect to grow in each moment. I said, blessed are those. Blessed are the merciful. I don't know. Do you, when things happen to people who you don't like, do you laugh? Do you say good for them? No, that's a faith. I do it sometimes. In fact, not anymore. Since I came to church, I haven't done it. <laughs> What about you? <laughs> when bad things happen to certain people, do you rejoice? Yeah, we do. We all, we, in our human state, we do. Well, in other words, stop doing that. And when things are happen to pe happening to people, even if you don't like them, realize, you know, it could have happened to me. And bless them still. Tell them I love you. Hello. Can you do that? Yes. That's the one of the hardest things to do. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yeah. Blessed are the pure in heart. The pure in heart 
are people who don't give way to emotion. When we are driven by emotion, we are driven by hate, bitterness, anger, personal love. So we could sit down here and love this person but don't love that person. You ever been in a space like that? Where your left shoulder gets stiff because you don't want to move to see the person next to you. You go home and you have a cranky neck. You ever had a stiff neck? From not having to deal with somebody on your left side, you park them there and your body keeps shifting so. But you have to go back there at some time so you move your shoulder and you realize, oh my God. I don't know. If your heart is pure, it means whosoever will is free to come. Elena, are you examining yourself as I speak? Good. Rewarded are the peacemakers, people. You know what a peacemaker? Hello. This too shall pass. See the good in everything. No matter what he did to me, I still love him. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a love another fighter. himself to release all the negative aspects of his mind so he could start to appreciate everybody he met. You got to do it too. This is what you need to do if you need to plant your life on a rock. Hello now. You looking at these frogs on boulders here. That's just symbolism. The idea of this adventure is to discover the principles and the techniques for good living. So you could live a healthy, happy, and prosperous life. He says, rewarded, of those, rewarded are those who are persecuted for, my, for righteousness. You know how sometimes you go in a long life and people don't like you because you're different. Not that you look different. Looking different and being different are two different things. Being different because of the words that come from your mouth. Your actions and your reactions. And people hate you. And say all kinds of stuff against you. You ever been there? No, talk to me. Have you ever been there where no matter how much good you do, People don't like you. Yes. You must be there now, do you? <laughs> oh, God, I have several clothes in here. But can you understand that it is not about what you have done for people? Every moment that life gives you an opportunity to do, you do. And when you do, you become more proficient at doing. So it doesn't matter whether you do to your enemy or you do it to your friend. You just do. And in doing, you find the peace and the happiness. It's not about them. It's about me. Alana, how often do I do it? 70 times 7. That means every day I get up, I go to work to do. And it doesn't matter who I do it to. Alana. I don't leave home with a list of non-doers and do-do's. <laughs> now, whoever comes in my space, no matter what they do, still there. He says, they will revive you and they will persecute you. You go to work and you're doing your job and somebody wants your job 
when they go to your board behind your back. And all you have to remember, that job that you have is only but, but a stepping stone to the other jobs that are available to you. And if they want to get you fired, you may be fired. But you see what's in your mind? Having stored up treasures in heaven, you can take them someplace else and succeed. Don't get offended with your next door person you're sitting down with at work. Speak to them. The law will catch up with them. And the law will help you prosper. It's not about them. It's about you. Having told his disciples the kind of attitudes they need to develop to be on this spiritual path, he said, you know why I told you that? Because you are the light of the world. You make the difference wherever you are. Nobody else makes the difference in your life. You are the only one living in your life. You are the one who makes the difference in your life. You bring light wherever you are. You bring clarity. You bring understanding. Deal with yourself and don't react to those outside of you. Focus on what you are about. And don't focus on other people. Hello. Hello. You know, each one of us is a little light. But we have covered up that light with so much negativity and error thought, beliefs that are not true. Take them off. Take them off. And let the lightning flash from you so powerful that it will engage everybody around you. Because they will see the light and they will want to be like you. Because you are the light. You bring understanding. You bring clarity. You bring God good to them. That I know. That's what Jesus is saying. And then, continuing in the other chapters that followed, chapters 6 and 5, 6 and 7, he told, he told them that there are certain things that you have to do. You've got to stop judging. You've got to realize that every human being is an inlet for God and an outlet for God. And because every human being thinks differently, every human being will do things differently. Your way is not the only way. It is not the absolute way. Hello now. Hello. Your way is not my way. So I can do it my way and find happiness. Stop condemning me. I love that. You do it your way. <laughs> some of us can't do that. Because we believe we are right. You ever feel, you ever feel right? That God has commissioned you to tell other people what is right in the sight of God. And when you look at their life, sorry about that, I mean those people's lives. <laughs> you say, my God, why have you forsaken them? I don't know. Judge not means don't Put your opinion, because all judgments is opinion. All belief is opinion. Every religious experience is based on a single opinion. Whether it came from the East, the Middle East, the West, the North, or the, or the South, it is an opinion. No human being can never ever know the absolute truth about anything. All we can do is offer an opinion, and an opinion is what sets the world at war. Keep your opinion to yourself. 
The best of business is to mind your business is to mind your own business. Leave other people's business alone. When your house on fire, wet your house. Don't believe you're supposed to wet the whole neighborhood. You have a bucket of water. You see about yourself. I don't know. We are not here to tell other people how to live. They have a right to live the way they choose to live because they are working on their own ability to conjure up ideas. He says, beware of false prophets. People will come and tell you, I was sent by God for you. Are you a believer? Are you washed? Well, I have what you need. Beware of them. Be aware of he who can mess up your mind. Anybody who can get into your mind. Beware. He says, you got to learn to ask, to seek, to knock. Your role as a traveler is to keep looking. I don't know. To knock at doors and ask the question, am I in the right place? I don't know. Don't be afraid to live. Ask. Seek. Knock, he says. He says, see with the single eye. Place your intent upon one thing at a time. Don't let two things govern your journey in life. You can't serve God and mammon at the same time. You can't serve two masters. A house divided cannot stand. Hello now. You've got to learn to live the disciplined life. Keep your mind where your dreams are. Don't look to see anybody else. Well, they have a new pool. I need one. No. <coughs> My life did not call for a pool. You leave the pool alone. Down the road, you may not get a pool. You might get a lake. <coughs> he says, Do not Expend energy on outer causes, causes. Don't run after things. Whatever is for you will come. It will come at the right time, the right amount. So sometimes we don't even realize what we have in our midst is what we deserve. Take another look and the people in your life. They came there because you invited them. Because of who you are. Don't wish for what someone, well, my girlfriend has a new boyfriend. He's six fat. 